right, we're rolling. We're rolling. All right, cheers, brother. Cheers. Today is a great afternoon. It's like podcast with Delos. That's what I feel like it is. Kind of. Well, it's been not. just over a year since we did our electrical system update in Grenada. And uh, I think it's an awesome opportunity to kind of take a checkpoint since we've had it basically cruising and torture tested it in real world conditions and then have our patrons submit a bunch of questions uh, about the system, about how it's performing, about how we're liking it and everything else and do our best to answer those. Uh, so I think the first thing I wanted to do is just do a recap over the changes that we made in Grenada. Uh, probably the biggest thing that we did is we replaced the old lead acid batteries with a lithium ion bank. Yeah. Uh, we did make a video about that, so I'll put that link in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, the other things we did that was a pretty huge change for us is we got rid of propane on the boat. Uh, so we went to a fully electric cooking system, induction uh, cooktop, uh, electric convection oven. We even went with an electric barbecue, which Maybe the jury's still out on that one, but it does, <laughs> it does work, but it's, I'm not in love with it yet. It works, though. Um, we replaced uh, some wiring. We put in some new monitoring equipment, the uh, Victron uh, monitoring system, and we put in a gigantic uh, three kilowatt inverter. Yep. So those are the main changes. Uh, and we have a bunch of questions. Brady's going to read the questions off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best to answer, and uh, if you guys have any questions, then... Cool. Hopefully I can clarify. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of questions here, so we thanks. We got 24 pages of questions yeah. from our <laughs> Thanks patrons. to all the patrons yeah. for sending in these questions, and it's really cool to talk about this stuff because Brian might know it all, but the rest of us on board might not know exactly, so we're learning as we go I might too. not even think to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the first thing, which is cool, to get like an overall overview of our system and what's going on with that. And the other day, the girls helped you put together a little diagram. Uh, this question specifically is from Darren Gladstone, and he basically just wants to see some sketches of the system wiring. Uh, they're few and far between for an entire system, and I don't know if we can show the ideal wiring, but we can show what our wiring is. On mm -hmm. board. It's sort of evolved over 20 years of yes. Delos. Yes. Delos is 20 years old now. Look at this thing. Um, ba -ba -bum. Yep. Okay, so the first thing I want to note is this is my draft with my sort of scribbles on it. And then... You should have been a doctor. <laughs> and then Kaza and Blue helped me do this one. Da -da -da. Uh, which I think turned out quite well. So this is a pretty high level, not an actual schematic because it doesn't show switches, it doesn't show breakers, it doesn't show fuses. Uh, it just shows general system components and how they all interconnect. So it's a high level view. Um, on the left, we have all of our power generation sources. They're kind of in this, what is that, a green turquoise sort of color? Yeah. Uh, for example, we have our solar panels here, three solar panels. Each one is 310 watts for a total of 930 watts of power. We have our AirX wind generator, 400 watts, the hydro towing generator, about 100 watts, and the silent wind generator, which is also rated at 400 watts. Under here we have our diesel generator, which produces 220 volts at 50 hertz, 8 kilowatt generator powered by diesel fuel. We also have to include dock power because we can plug into the dock. We have two sources of dock power, 220 volt and 110 volt. The 110 volt goes through a step-up transformer and then into this relay box which handles the switching between generator and dock power so that we never connect the sources together. And then we have the alternators on the engine. So we actually have two alternators on our diesel engine. One is a 12 volt 20 amp alternator that just charges the starting battery, which is right there. And then we have a 24 volt 50 amp alternator that goes through a, a spike suppressor, which I'll talk about in a moment, a charge controller, and then ultimately charges our big battery bank. So those are the sources over here. We have solar, we have wind, we have hydro, we have diesel, 
we have dock, and we have alternators. So we have a lot of different power generation sources. And the reason why I think that's pretty cool is for uh, a few reasons is one, each one of these produces a fraction of the amount of power that we need on Delos. Mm -hmm. But putting them all together, we're able to produce an abundance of energy, like really quite a bit. Uh, the other thing that I, that I think is cool about having a lot of sources is you, you have built-in redundancy. So I can remember when, you know, the water maker sprung a leak in, what was it, Chagos, mm -hmm. and it shot water directly into uh, our battery chargers. Uh, so we were not able to run the generator, but we were able to run off of solar uh, and the hydro generator while we were sailing to make up the difference. So now, there would be some systems where the solar panels would go into the same charger as a generator, or are they always kind of separate redundant systems? Well, the way that I've done the system on Delos is everything is sort of standalone. Yeah, but uh, is that is that, yeah, I guess you don't know if that's the norm or not. Well, I mean, there are combined controllers, so maybe it's good to check up to talk about the, the red portion okay. now, because the red portion is actually controllers and chargers. So this guy right here is the Victron 50 amp MPPT mo mean PowerPoint tracking solar controller. So all of the energy from the solar panels goes to this controller, and then it goes onto a 24 volt DC bus which then goes into the batteries. Can you explain what a controller is? So uh, a controller or a charge controller basically uh, helps you limit current and controls voltage. So for example, if we didn't have this charge controller in here, you could have the possibility of either applying too high a voltage to the batteries, applying too much current to the batteries, uh, overcharging them, um, things like that. So this guy is basically a gateway and a limiter and a controller. It's like a, a faucet on your sink, It's right? like a faucet on your sink. You, you're determining how much power you need. Uh, the MPPT portion of the charge controller actually helps you develop. Uh, it's a more efficient way of using solar to charge batteries. There's okay. a lot more to that, but yeah. out of the scope of this video. Um, we basically have the same thing for the wind generator. So the silent wind has its own charge controller. And inside these charge controllers, you can configure the, the voltage profile for the particular batteries, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but lithium batteries are quite specific on the voltages they like to be charged at. So if you were to just hook the solar panels or the wind generators straight up to the batteries, you would lose the ability to set when you want the bulk, bulk charging to happen, when you want the absorption and the, and the flow to happen on yeah. your batteries. So they're pretty important. Uh, and I do think it's best to keep them separate so that if one fails, you still have the other one that yeah. can kick in. Um, the hydro tow generator is very simple. It really doesn't have a charge controller. And the Air X one is an old wind generator. It actually has the controller built in, the regulator built into the unit itself. Um, as far as these three, these are our battery chargers. So where these guys take uh, energy from solar and wind and turn it into DC energy for the batteries to be charged. These take 220 volts AC from either the generator or the dock, and then they turn it into DC power that then charges the batteries. So we have quite a few battery chargers because we have had them fail over the years and it sucks to be stranded without the ability to charge your batteries from the generator. Yep. So we have a Victron 100 amp, a Victron 70 amp and a Master Volt 80 amp. So we have, what is that, 250 amps of charging capacity at 24 volts, which would be like on a 12 volt system, that would be 500 amps of charging. Yep. It's a lot. Um, down here, we have the same thing for our alternators. So because uh, lithium batteries are quite specific about the voltage they like to charge at, I needed to install a 24 volt to 24 volt DC charge controller between our alternator on the main diesel and the battery bank. So this allows me to, to control the charging profile of the alternator. And then I also have a, a spike suppressor in there because if these batteries become disconnected from the system for any reason, the voltage can spike on the alternator which can damage the diodes, it can damage anything else 
hooked up to the system if you just suddenly take a load off. So this basically would take a high voltage spike and just uh, shunt it to ground. Oh, it would deter the, it would the spike. Send, send it to ground and smooth out that spike to avoid damaging your equipment. Um, so that's, does that make sense to everybody so far? Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of what, I mean, that's what all these buttons are on the panels and stuff over there. Uh, moving to this section, the blue, uh, we have our lithium battery bank. So basically everything from the charging side flows into the lithium battery bank. There's eight 100 amp hour batteries. These are uh, batteries made in Nevada by a company called Dragonfly Energy. Uh, we got them from uh, our friend Justin in the UK at uh, Transporter Energy. He's the one that hooked us up with these. Um, so far they've actually worked spectacularly. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit more about the actual batteries and how they've been performing a little bit later. But in total, it would be 800 amp hours at 12 volts or 400 amp hours at 24 volts. That's the big battery bank. Down here we have a separate starter battery for the generator and the main diesel. Uh, it's completely isolated from the house bank, so there's no way because first of all, they're different voltages. These are linked to run in series to get 24 volts. This is a 12 volt battery. Mm -hmm. They're different types of batteries, so they have different charging profiles. So the voltage that you charge a lead acid battery is different than what you would charge a lithium battery at. Which is why the, the starter battery is not hooked up to any of the house battery chargers. It's completely it's isolated. On its own now, one. what I have done is I installed this. This is a 24 to 12 volt DC charger. So basically, this little guy allows us to isolate and charge the starting battery from the entire 24 volt system. Yeah. So, you know, the house bank is well monitored. We're always putting energy into it. We're always charging it. Uh, this charge control ensures that the starter battery all, always stays topped up. Yep. So there's two ways to charge a starter battery. One, this charger. The other one, the small 12 volt alternator on, on the, the main. From the, the starting battery, we're just having two loads on here. Just starters. It starts the Volvo engine and it starts the generator. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very simple. If we look on the other side of these batteries, we start to see that's some where of the magic happens. This is this is the this is the incredibly complicated side that has been simplified into like three boxes. Yeah. <laughs> so out of the batteries, we have uh, a few things. We have a battery monitoring system that shows our current, shows our voltage, shows our charge remaining. We can have emergency alarm set for battery temperature and uh, for battery voltage and just about everything. The main load on here is our inverter. Uh, so the inverter has two input sources, one 24 volts DC, the other one 220 volts AC that actually comes all the way back from either the generator or dock power. And the reason why we have that is because if we have the generator or the dock power plugged in, the inverter just passes that energy through. It just like is like an open pipe. Yeah. It just lets the power go through. If we turn off those sources, the generator or the inverter automatically kicks in and produces our 220 volt power. Yeah. So when we did the major system upgrade, this inverter basically is the workhorse of the system now mm -hmm. because we leave it on all day long, every day. Sometimes we forget, and I think we left it on last night, or mm -hmm. at least it was on this morning. Um, it powers the stove, it powers the water kettle, it powers the toaster, it powers the oven, the ice machine, our laptops, everything. Um, so it does it does quite a lot. Anything that's plugged into an outlet. And, and that's all represented here. So yeah. all the loads. Uh, these other two boxes are the DC loads. So this is the AC loads powered by the inverter or the generator. These are our DC loads. So this is 24 volts coming out of the batteries. Uh, things like the fridge, the freezer, our winches, the windlass, uh, the furlers, lights, fans, basically anything that, that is mechanically run from electricity on the boat is a 24 volt load. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of stuff. We have another type of load down here. It's a 12 volt load. So things like our radios, our 
uh, navigation instruments, the radar, the autopilot, uh, those mm. things are run off of 12 volts. Uh, in order to power that, you notice we did not just hook this to our 12 volt starter battery because that could potentially be bad. What we do is we have another 24 to 12 volt DC converter that takes the voltage down and regulates it at 12 volts for all of this more sensitive equipment. It's like it goes from 12 to 24 a few different times through all of these different systems, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, one time here, one time here. Only two. Oh, only two, okay. Yeah. I guess it goes from 12. But I think that the thing I like about the, the design of this system, and it's kind of evolved over a number of years, is it's sort of segregated. Yeah. And so if you have a problem with the 12 volt side, you know exactly where to look, right? Yeah. You could just check that box. If you're getting power into it and not power out, then you know that that's bad. Um, so everything is pretty easy to isolate and the boat has been set up so that you can get into one part, check the voltages and see exactly what's going on. But it is sort of a complicated system. Imagine all these pieces sort of working together to- Wires run everywhere. To make the, the house. And, and some of these wires are quite large. Uh, if you can imagine the amount of power that this three kilowatt inverter takes, the feed line to this from the battery bank is like it's it's like a pretty big cable. Yeah, and then um, of course all the switches that are on this side of that stuff in this line. Yep, that's power. This, this stuff. This thing right here would be another schematic, probably two or three or four times as complicated as this. Yep. Um, so this is actually the simpler side of the system. So, does that high-level view make sense to you guys? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah? I feel like I could follow. Yeah, and now you know, like, each of the switches up there, you know, when you turn on an AC load, you know, it's it's connecting the power from the 220 volt source, which each has to come from the inverter or from the generator. So with this specific system, let's say that you were plugged into the dock power, and everything was good, it was going into the chargers and into the batteries, and then you turn the generator on at the same time, what would happen in that case? It would uh, it would go to the same relay. This relay is a single select and relay switch. Okay. So it has priority. So the generator takes priority over the dock power. So it would, it would switch at so that point. So this relay would say, oh, I have voltage coming from this side. Let me disconnect this other input and and if it was the other way around, the generator's running and you plug the dock power in, nothing would happen. It, would, it wouldn't do anything okay. because it would already be on its priority yep. source. Yeah, so, because if you were to connect the generator to the dock power and the waves were not, because it's AC, if they weren't 100% in sync, it would be a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what, <laughs> would not be good. <laughs> no, it would not be good. Okay. Well, that's an overall schematic of everything. That's yeah, good. that was through quite that. an answer for that one question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think good to go over. What's going on, Brian? Uh, I'm failing miserably at trying to do a silly, like, at the end of the video, like, subscribe, comment thing, which I'm the worst at. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I've really been looking forward to making these videos for uh, a long time. And I finally got them done while we're here in Sweden. If you like the video and you like the topics, please uh, be sure to like it on YouTube. Leave a comment. That really helps us to know whether we're on the right track with making the videos that you want to see. And most importantly, we're still releasing videos on a weekly basis. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do it. Make sure that you get all the videos uh, from us as a notification. And it really, really, really helps us in our YouTube demographics and stats and things. So, Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one.